last time, <clears throat> last time we studied last time, what is this wall? Last time we studied what is this wall? Then I told you this wall is is a seven thousand years. In just seven thousand years, this wall. That's the fall of over here is a creation of Adam. Over here, the fall of Adam. Is the fall of Adam begins this year, and at the end of seven thousand, it's a judgment. Judgment will be the end of this world. Okay, starting from fall of Adam to the judgment. That will be seven thousand years of this world. So this world. I thought that this is a purpose, purpose of creation school. Purpose of creation school is also this world. It was God's divine plan to open up the creation purpose school, okay, for seven thousand years. After the finishing, at the end of the school, then we will go back to eternity again. That is uh, Revelation 21, 22. Before the fall was uh, Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. First two chapters. And the last two chapters of the Bible. So make sure why our God did design 7,000 years. We will study further later. Today, we will study upon the fall of Adam. I will teach you slowly, so it is important for your people. Okay, teach this very slowly, step by step, because this is a very important message. Okay, upon the fall of Adam, the Lord God, Lord God, appeared to Satan. Immediately after the fall of Adam, Lord God appeared to Satan. This is uh, Genesis 3.15. Genesis 3.15. And prophesizing something. Prophesizing something. Then our question is this, who is the Lord God? Who the Lord God? Who is the Lord God? In our Trinity, is it Father God or the Son God or the Holy Spirit? We have to find out who, which God appeared to Satan. Okay, now, Lord God here, the Lord God that's, that's an English translation, Lord God, but in Hebrew, original, Hebrew, Lord said that's Yahweh. 
Yahweh Elohim. That's the original text. Okay, Yahweh Elohim. Later, Yahweh changed it to Jehovah. Same name. Yahweh Jehovah, this one meaning, this one it's, it has all the time the Bible names carries meaning. Okay? So Yahweh or Jehovah, this means <clears throat> covenant. Covenant covenant. What do you mean by covenant? It's a promising. But it's a it's a legal promising. Meaning covenant. Legal promise. It's a covenant. Elohim covenant God. Yahweh Jehovah means covenant God. In other words, promising God. That's the meaning. What promising? What promising is that always that he will come down to this world, he will die on the cross. Crucifixion promising. So when we call Yahweh always, which carries, that implies the blood of Jesus and crucifixion. Yahweh means, okay, crucifixion promising God. That's the Yahweh. Now, English translation missed that point. English translation translates that as the Lord. Capital letter, Lord. Lord is really, that's the master. Because later, this Jehovah uh, translated to Adonai. Jehovah. Adonai. Adonai means almighty. Then, this one translated to the Lord. Okay, so, the Lord, we have to go back to original here. The Lord carries just master, but it goes far beyond the master. We trace back to the blood of Jesus. Crucifixion involved in the name. That's the Yahweh. Now, here. Then how about Elohim? Elohim means creator. So you can see Yahweh Elohim here in the in the English Bible say the Lord God this means creator God will come down this world he will who will die on the cross for our salvation that is the meaning of the name of the Yahweh Elohim, the Lord God. Now, the Lord God here, Yahweh Elohim, 
appeared to Satan immediately after the fall of Adam. In other words, Jesus appeared to. Okay, then how do we know Yahweh Elohim is Jesus? How do we know? There are many Bible references. I will give you Bible references. Okay, now this is first Bible references Matthew twenty three. 37. You just, uh, you will see that, okay? And also, John 8, 55 to 59. 56, put down. John. And also, Revelation 1, 8. And Isaiah 44, 6. In Revelation 1, 8, Jesus said, I am the Alpha and Omega. Jesus said. In the Isaiah 44, 6, Yahweh Elohim appeared to Isaiah saying that I am the Alpha and Omega. Okay. Therefore, in the Old Testament, Jesus said, I am the Alpha and Omega. I am Yahweh Elohim. And in the New Testament, say, I am the Alpha and Omega. That combined together, and thinking of all these references that I gave you, we studied that previously. Remember that? Pre-existence of Jesus in the Old Testament. Do you remember that? Now, let me, let me go back here. Now, in other words, Lord God appeared to Satan means, in a New Testament language, Jesus appeared to Satan. Okay? Jesus appeared to Satan in Genesis 3.15. Okay? And he said this. He said, Jesus said to Satan, okay, the seed, it's, it's a capital letter S. See the woman And oh, small letters as seed of you, that's Satan. The seed of woman and a seed of Satan. They will fight. They will fight. Then what would happen? Fight. Then who will claim victory? The seed of seed of woman, the seed of Satan will 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 attack the feet 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 of seed of woman. Okay, that means that Jesus will be crucified. But see the woman, okay, will counter back. The see the woman will attack head of seed of Satan. Means victory.
So Jesus will claim victory. Okay? That is written in Genesis 3.15. 3.15. Okay. Now, we theologians, we call this Genesis 3.15, we call this Proto-Evangelion. Okay. The, this is a Greek word. It's a Greek word. Greek word. Proto means first. Okay. Evangelion means is a gospel. Gospel means is a good news. Or happy news. Evangelion means gospel means gospel. Okay? So Genesis 3.15 in, in, in a theological term, proto-evangelion. Okay? The proto means first. Evangelion means gospel. Gospel means good news. Okay? Now, there is another terminology it calls a proto, instead of evangelion, euangelion. Euangelion. It's one word, euangelion. It's, it's a Greek word too, same meaning. That's the first. Evangelion actually means it's a gospel. In the Greek word, gospel. It's good news, good news, and happy news. Evangelion. Evangelion. It's a Evangelion. Evang accent is Evangelion. Okay? This one means this. It's interesting. Here, Jesus appeared to Satan. Okay? Then someday, someday, I will come to this world. I will come to this world as a human, as a full human, as a fuel, see, it's a full human. It's a hundred percent humanity. Hundred percent human. And I will die on the cross, will shed the blood, and I will claim victory in way of resurrection. You see, resurrection means he is 100% deity. It's a resurrection. A victory is, means it's a resurrection. That means 100% deity. I will come to this world to die 
as a hundred percent humanity, okay, but later I will resurrect means I will come back to hundred percent deity. So in other words that I will be a hundred percent human for thirty three years in this world. Thirty three years, thirty three years in this world, then go back to hundred percent deity. Okay? Then go back to hundred percent deity. Now during this thirty three years time I will empty deity. I will empty deity. It's Philippians two seven. In Philippians two seven said, thirty three years time, Jesus will empty deity, becoming hundred percent. 100% humanity. This is a very traditional orthodoxy Christian doctrine. This is a very important Christian doctrine. That doctrine was confirmed in the Council of Chalcedon. The Council of Chalcedon, Chalcedon, okay, AD 451. In the Council of Chalcedon, Chalcedon, here said they officially set up 100% deity, 100% humanity of Jesus. That's a very important concept here. Finally, 451, Jesus is 100% human. He was 100% human for 33 years. And also he is 100% God. So for 33 years time, he emptied all the deity according to here Philippians 2.7. Paul said that. So now, Jesus emptied, 100% emptied the E.T. of himself. Now, in lecture 49, what is Proto-Evangelion? What is Proto-Evangelion? Then, don't forget that upon, immediate upon the fall of Adam, right here, immediate upon fall of Adam, Jesus prophesied to Satan who caused fall of Adam, okay, that I will come down this world out of the seed of woman. Okay, that's the important part here. Out of the seed of woman, how many years after? Actually, here? Yeah? It's 4,000 years later. I will come down 4,000 years later as out of seed of woman. Who is the seed of woman? Maria. Okay, we will go over later. Okay. Becoming a 100% human. And I will die on the cross to save his own people. And so on. That promise that promise was given here in Genesis 3.15. 
This promise we theologians call Proto-Evangelion and Proto-Evangelion. Okay, Evangelion means Evangelion means the gospel. In other words, the first gospel upon the fall of Adam, Jesus, Jesus made the first gospel with the Satan. It's interesting to Satan. So Satan heard about that from Jesus that he will come down to this world. Today, I will teach you step by step on this issue, one by one. So now in the first lecture here, what is the Proto-Evangelion? Okay, and who promised that Evangelion? Then, Yahweh God. Okay, who is the Yahweh God? That's a Jehovah God. What is the meaning of Yahweh? Covenantal God. God who made a covenant. What covenant? Blood covenant. Okay. Meaning Proto-Evangelion covenant. That's the name of the Yahweh God. Translated in English, the Lord God. Okay. So that is, I am not happy with that translation, the Lord God. That's why some Bibles translate instead of Lord God, they say Yahweh God. That's a true meaning hidden inside, Yahweh God. So instead of calling Jesus uh, in the Old Testament, you better say Yahweh God. That means bloodshedding, promising God. That's a Yahweh God. And that's why Messianic Jew people today, Messianic Jewish people today, instead of the Lord God, they call it Yeshua. Yeshua. Have you heard that? Yesu Jesus means what? The one who, who saves his own people. Yesu, named Jesus, Jesus, carries the blood there. That's why Messianic Jews today, instead of calling the Lord, they better, they prefer to use Yeshua. Yeshua, it's Joshua. Joshua. Okay, also Hosea, it's the same meaning. Hosea and Joshua are the same. Yeshua, Savior. Hosea, and Joshua, and Yeshua and Jesus in Yahweh and Jehovah are the same expressions. They all say Savior. And crucifixion and Covenant. It all implies. Okay. Hosea, Joshua, Yeshua, Jesus, Yahweh, Jehovah, crucifixion, Savior, and covenantal God. Okay. Covenantal God. Okay. Now, let me just uh, uh, go for this first lecture. What is the 
What is a proto? Evangelion. Okay, let's stop right here. May God bless you. Amen.